Welcome to an episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Today we will take a look at two topics. So we'll take a look at dynamical memory man allocation in the Linux kernel module or driver and we will take a look at the private data pointer of the struct file which represents an opened file in the Linux kernel. So let's go. So I will navigate into my Linux driver tutorials folder and as a template for today's video I will use um, lesson 10 auto device file and I will create a new folder I will call kmalloc because that's the name for dynamical memory management in Linux. Okay, so let me go into this folder and let's take a look what's in here. So hello cdev.c are the C sources of our Linux kernel module. The makefile is there to build our kernel module and this readme will give you some more information if you're displaying this in, in GitHub for example. Okay, so let me open up hello cdev.c and in here we have an example for how to um, yeah, register a device number or allocate a range of device numbers, how to create a character device and how to automatically create a device file for this character device. And for the um, file operations which are supported by this character device, we have only this read function available in here. But for today I want to implement the open, the release, the read and the write function. So I can show you a little bit more. But I won't reinvent the wheel here and instead I will just copy this code from previous lessons. So in here we have an example for a read and a write callback. So let's copy that and let's get rid of this recall back here and in lesson 7 I think we have an example for an open and a release function. So let's also copy this over. Okay, good and I think I think, yep. I, we don't need this, these prints here, so let me delete them here as well. Okay, so now let's talk about dynamical memory allocation in the Linux kernel. So if you're writing a normal C program or a user space program in Linux and you want to allocate memory dynamically, you would normally use the malloc function to get the memory and the free function to free the memory. And in the kernel you have similar functions available, but because you're in the kernel the functions are called kmalloc and kfree for kernel malloc and kernel free. And in the kernel space you also have the function ksetalloc available, so if you're using kmalloc you will get some memory, but this memory is not initialized. If you're using kset alloc, you will get memory which is initialized with zeros, which can be handy sometimes. And in order to use kmalloc and um, kfree, we have to include the header linux lab.h. Okay, so and in this example, I will also use the private data from our struct file in here. So I told you the struct file um, represents an opened file in the Linux kernel. And to an opened file we can pass some private data. And why not dynamically allocate this private data for... So every time I'm opening the file I will allocate some memory and I will save the pointer to this memory in private data. So let's use kmalloc here. And in the release function, of course, I have to free the memory again. So let's use kfree here and free the memory behind the pointer private data. Okay, now we have to talk about the arguments of kmalloc. So the first argument is similar to the malloc function. This argument is the number of bytes you want to allocate. So let me add a define here. I will call it mem size and I will set it to 64. So we will allocate 64 bytes of memory here. But kmalloc has a second argument and the second argument is a flag which tells the kernel how it should allocate the memory. 
So if you don't really care, you can use the flag GFP kernel. But for example, if you want to use this memory in an interrupt context, you can use GFP atomic. Or if you want to allocate memory for a DMA transaction, for example, then it's important for you to have continuous memory. We will talk about these topics in another episode. But then you would use the flag GFP, GFP DMA. But here in this example, I don't really care how the memory is allocated, so I will use GFP kernel here. And just like in user space, after calling malloc, we have to check if a valid pointer was returned or if a null pointer was returned, because if we have a null pointer here, we are out of memory and we could not allocate the memory. So in this case, I will print out an error message. Hello, um, cdef out of memory. So I will print this line to the kernel's lock and then I will return error no memory here. Okay, but if we we if kmalloc um, returned a valid pointer, we have now 64 bytes available behind this private data pointer which we can use for example in the read or the write callback function. So here we have the read callback function and here I will create a new pointer I will call text and I will set this pointer to philp private data. So even in the read and the write callback we have this pointer from the type struct file available and over this we can access the private data again. Okay, the only thing I have to do here instead of size of text I have to use mem size here. And I should type it correctly and also here. Okay, and then basically what we're doing here is here we are calculating how much bytes we want to copy. And then here we are copying the bytes from our kernel memory into a user space memory. And here in the write callback we are doing a very similar thing. So once again we also have our philp pointer available here. So let's set the text pointer to fill private data here. And here once again we have to use mem size. And that should be basically it. Okay, then the next thing we have to do is we have to add our file operations. So I want to implement a write callback, which will be my write. An open callback, which will be my open. And a close callback, which will be, or a release callback, which will be my release. And I have a small problem here because I'm using this offset variable here. So this gives me the file offset and in case I want to reset the file offset to zero, for example, I first write some bytes to it and then I want to read it back, then I have to set the file offset to zero again. And for being able to do so, I also have to implement the llseek callback. But here I won't implement it myself, I will just set it to default llseek, which is a function already provided by the Linux kernel, yeah, which just resets this offset variable here, depending on how I call llseek in my user space program. Okay, so that should be it. Let me try to compile the program. Let's see how much mistakes I've made. This is looking good. Then let's load my kernel module. And now we should see a device file called hello zero. Okay, so let's try to write something into this file. And now let's read it back. Okay, but we didn't re read back hello world. We just get some garbage here. And the reason why we have this garbage here is because we haven't initialized this with zeros before. So malloc, kmalloc okay, just um, allocate some bytes but it doesn't initialize them. 
And why didn't we read hello world back? Well, the reason for this is here with, a, with this pipe, we were opening the device file, we were writing to it and then we were closing the file again. So the memory was freed again and down here with cat, we opened the file again, allocated the memory, read it, but of course it's, yeah, we just get the default value here. So in case we want to read the thing back we wrote to it previously, we are not allowed to close the file in between. So let me write a small test application here in which I will show you how to do this. So let me include some standard headers, standard IO, standard lib, uni std.h and file control. And here in this main function, I will need a file descriptor and I need, ah, maybe let's use dynamical memory allocation because why not? Um, define mem size is equal is 64. Okay, so the first thing I will do here is I will call malloc and allocate um, 64 bytes here as well. Then of course I have to check if text is a null pointer or not. Okay, and of course at the end I have to free the memory again. And I will return with zero here. Okay, and now let me open up my device file. And I will open it with read and write permission. By the way, these read and write or these permission flags, these come from the header file control up here. Then let's check if this returns something smaller than zero because in this case, an error occurred. I will free the text and I will return with one from my program. Okay, now let's use printf to write something in here and let's write hello world into this file. Then I will use the write function um, to write text and the length of text into my file descriptor. Then I will use lseek to set the file um, offset or the file pointer of my file descriptor to zero again. Um, cur set cur or seek. I think it's seek set, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah, it looks good. Hopefully, yeah. That's it. And then let's clear text and initialize it with all zeros. And at the end, let's read back what we have here and let's print it out. Okay, so that should be it basically. Let me also try to compile this test application. Okay, warnings, malloc. Da -da -da -dum. Yep, I should include, okay, malloc, I have a typo here and I have to include string.h. So let's first include string.h and let's fix this typo here with malloc and then let's try it again. Now the compilation worked and if I execute this program, it writes hello world to the file, then it reads it back and then we still have our private data available. So it returns hello world. And if we take a look at the kernel's log, we can also see that here we write 11 bytes to the file. And down here we are reading 64 bytes back. Yep, and everything is fine, everything worked. Okay, cool, so that's how to use dynamical memory management and the private data pointer of the struct file in the Linux kernel module. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Linux. So, Thanks for watching and goodbye.